Subject number 24, injected with Valhalla serum, survived for 2 minutes and 45 seconds, time of death, for 22 in the morning, I'm the only one in my house, who's talking. Henry's eyes snapped open. Instead of the familiar door to his magic warehouse, he was greeted by a blinding white light and a stark white ceiling. The walls around him were cold, metallic, and filled with an air of mystery. The room was set up like a healing hall, with him lying on a metal table, his bare upper body connected to several magic wires. The cold metal against his back sent chills down his spine. Several figures in white robes, looking like researchers, were standing around him with expressions of shock. Didn't I just accept a new role from a client? I chose the standard start, where am I? Henry's head was throbbing, his thoughts a jumbled mess. His last memory was of accepting a power-leveling task in Stellar Ocean, creating a new character, and then the smell of burnt meat. Quick, notify Lady Bella, the subject is alive. Call the city guards, control the subject immediately. The white-robed figures were shouting in a language Henry didn't understand, but he could make out the meaning. Words like, subject, survival time, and, city guards, gave him a bad feeling. There were hurried footsteps outside the door, someone was approaching fast. Should he stay put or make a run for it? He only hesitated for a moment before deciding on the latter. Waiting for death was not his style. He rolled off the table, tearing off the magic wires connected to him, and stumbled towards the door of the alchemy lab. The white-robed figures quickly retreated, not trying to stop him. Bang! He burst through the door into a long corridor, where a dozen city guards in black robes, wielding magic wands, were closing in. Henry recognized the sapling emblem on their chests and gasped, the new sprout organization from the 1.0 version of Stellar Ocean. Weren't they wiped out? A guard swung his magic wand, striking Henry. The pain was like a jolt of electricity, his body convulsed, his bones felt like they were about to split, and half his body went numb. Is this pain set to 100%? Henry was shocked. The maximum pain setting in Stellar Ocean was 40%. Anything above that could cause nerve damage to the player. His magic warehouse should have forced a disconnection by now. What's going on? Did his magic warehouse, which he had replaced seven years ago, malfunction again? Damn it, the craftsman who came to repair it a few days ago charged him 300 gold coins and guaranteed it wouldn't have any problems for half a year. He was completely unreliable. He would send a pigeon to the service center demanding a refund as soon as he could. A dozen burly, strong city guards swarmed him, and Henry got a taste of what it was like to be surrounded by big men. He was escorted to an empty, dark cell, and after the guards locked the door, they all left. The room was pitch black, and he was alone. Henry grimaced in pain, rubbing his wrist as he tried to recover, his head started to throb again, a flood of complex information rushing forth. After a while, Henry finally figured out what was going on. I've been transported to. Stellar Ocean. Henry widened his eyes in surprise. Stellar Ocean was an immersive holographic game with servers all over the world. At its peak, the number of simultaneous online players was close to 60 million. The game was set in a cosmic universe, with maps and scenes automatically evolved from the latest generation of magic stones. It was incredibly vast, accommodating hundreds of millions of players online without any burden. Countless guilds and groups were mining gold, running maps, and raiding dungeons in it. A top-tier piece of equipment could sell for tens to hundreds of millions of gold coins. A popular game like this would naturally have excellent balance. It ensured that wealthy players who were willing to spend money had certain advantages, but not so much that casual players felt it was unfair. The main way to maintain balance was to enhance the competitiveness and technicality of the game. Stellar Ocean was no exception, giving rise to professional gamers and professional leagues. At this point, you might think that I'm about to tell you how amazing and legendary a professional gamer Henry used to be. But no, although Henry made a living from gaming, he had nothing to do with the title of professional gamer. He was a despised power leveler, and a lone wolf at that. As a veteran power leveler in Stellar Ocean, Henry had experienced all the version changes and had a bit of fame. He was always in the top 100 of the High Tower Area Leaderboard, ranking 47th in the latest issue. With his skills, he could easily go pro, but he chose to remain a power leveler. The reasons for this will be explained later. New Sprout Organization, Stellar Ocean 1.0 version, one of the newbie birth planets, the event of the Sea Blue Star. Henry muttered to himself. Before he was transported, Stellar Ocean had been operating for over a decade, and the events of 1.0 had long become history. Had he gone back in time? Henry looked serious. Does that mean he can't get his 300 bucks back? Slap! Henry slapped himself. He had been transported to another world and he was still thinking about a refund. Was he an idiot? There seemed to be some gaps in his memory. 
He didn't know the experiences of his original body, and even his name was unclear. He only remembered some common knowledge about this world. For example, the time. The era he was in was the 687th year of the stellar calendar in the game, with the official launch in 688. In the era of version 1.0, the three colossal cosmic forces, the Glorious Alliance, the Redstone Empire, and the Ghost Sect, still maintained tens of thousands of years of peace since the end of the Age of Exploration. The Silver Knight Revolutionary Army had not yet been formed, the source of the superpower disaster was still struggling to survive on a desolate planet, the flashing world had not yet been born, the Tree of Life civilization had not yet invaded from the unexplored universe, and the Broken Star Ring, where the Sea Blue Star was located, was still on the edge of the observable universe. To maintain the game's appeal, Stellar Ocean borrowed from a game called Mountain's Mouth many years ago. Each updated version was a disaster and a major event. Gul'dan Yen Zhu had been causing trouble for many years, and then he was crushed to death by an egg. The Burning Legion invaded again, who knew how many times they would return. On this point, Stellar Ocean fully learned from the experience of Mountain's Mouth. It was exciting to play, but if you really got transported there, buddy, do you have a return ticket? The New Sprout organization was nothing compared to the Cosmic Wars in later versions, but for the current Henry, it was a deadly predicament. The Sea Blue Star is modeled after Earth, and the New Sprout organization is trying to overthrow the government of a major country. If I remember correctly, the test subjects of the Valhalla experiment are all brainwashed and turned into cannon fodder. The origin of this body was the raw material used by the New Sprout organization for human experiments. There were gaps in the previous memories, and apart from common knowledge, only fragments of memories of being imprisoned and experimented on remained. Around 20 years old, he looked vaguely similar to his previous self. Whether he was healthy or not was another matter. He remembered the words of the man in the white coat, he had been injected with the Valhalla potion. This was one of the alchemical potions of the new Sprout organization, used to enhance the brain. The mortality rate was as high as 70%, but it had caused a mutation in him. Suddenly, a line of semi-illusory blue text popped up in front of him, Magic Information Board. Henry was delighted. A semi-transparent blue magic screen unfolded in his line of sight, very sci-fi, without obstructing his view. Name, Henry Race, Carbon-Based Human Template, Non-Player Character Total Level, 1 Experience, 0 Secondary Occupation, Civilian Level 1 Main Occupation, None Personal Attributes, Strength 2, Agility 2, Stamina 3, Intelligence 3, Mystery 1, Charm 2, Luck 1 Free Attribute Points, 0 Vitality, 0 Energy Level, 1 2 Rank, F, You're a Weakling with a Combat Power of 5. Any random non-player character on the street could pin you down and rub you into the ground a hundred times over. Health Points, 23 slash 30 Stamina Points, 36 slash 36 specialty, high concentration, increases learning and manufacturing speed by 10% low level mental toughness, grants plus 3 willpower check skills, none potential points, zero occupational knowledge tree, not opened influence, none legend degree, zero equipment, none the magical information board of stars and sea, was still intact, much to Henry's relief. Indeed, handsome guys are blessed. However, Henry soon noticed something unusual. Non-player character template. He wasn't a gamer. Public countdown. Henry furrowed his brows, identifying several key factors. First, although he wasn't sure why the magical information board had traveled with him, this was the real world. Every life was vibrant and real. If he died, he wouldn't respawn like in the game. Second, he had become a non-player character but still had the magical system panel of a gamer. This was undoubtedly good news, as he could level up and grow like a gamer. Third, the public countdown made him realize that the real world might have returned to the time before the release of Stars and Sea. He had really gone back to the past. Would the gamers from before reappear? The fourth and most crucial point was that his current situation was very dangerous. Henry was frustrated. Looking at other people's transmigration, that was a normal start, okay? 500 gold coins and 10 population, with resources and helpers, maybe even an ex-girlfriend. Even without these, at least the environment was safe, right? Even if there was an enemy who wanted to kill you, they would only sneak around behind your back. But him? He was a lone hero at the start of the battle, trapped in enemy territory. If he wasn't careful, God would send him back to Valhalla, assuming such a thing existed. Henry didn't have the ability to respawn like a gamer. He only had one life, and it would be a shame to lose it here. Yes, what he thought was, a pity, slightly different from the normal thought of, I must survive. As for things like, my life is in my hands, not in the hands of fate, I will destroy the heavens if they want to destroy me, or, swallow a golden pill and break through the gate of life and death, these were usually the reactions of late-stage Chinibu patients. What the hell, am I the only one in the realm of swords and magic? Henry complained. 
even though his senses were as real as reality, he had a huge doubt in his heart. What was the essence of his existence? A real life? Or a set of data? Soul transmigration? Since I'm here, I'll have to make the best of it. I can only take one step at a time, Henry thought to himself. No matter what he was, if he didn't want to die heroically, he had to find a way to survive. He had a year before the game was released. Before the gamers arrived, he had a year to prepare. This was the only good news that cheered him up at the moment. He had a deep understanding of the destructive power of gamers. They were like a locust plague, synonymous with chaos and madness. Clang! At this moment, the door of the small black cell opened, and several people walked in. Due to the backlight, Henry couldn't see their faces clearly. He could only vaguely see the graceful silhouette of the leader, a lady. How is the test subject? The lady spoke to her subordinates behind her. Her voice had a slightly husky quality, like a cup of rich coffee, lazy with a hint of sexiness. It seems he's out of the manic phase. Lin Weixian, the director of the alchemy lab, looked at Henry up and down with a fiery gaze, as if looking at his own property. Henry croaked, who are you? Hmm. <clears throat> seems like there's a memory deviation. The lady raised an eyebrow. It's normal for the Valhalla potion to stimulate the brain and cause memory loss, Lin Weixian squinted. As Henry's eyes gradually adjusted to the light, he saw the woman's face clearly and was immediately stunned. She had long, wine-red curls that covered half of her face. She wore a tight black battle robe, her fiery figure seemed to burst out of her clothes, very provocative. Her features were both western and eastern, like a mixed race, stunningly beautiful. She wore black eyeshadow, exuding a mature and lazy temperament, like a beautiful snake. If Lilith had this beauty, the death of King Lucian wouldn't be unjust, Henry thought. I am Lady Bella, the director here. The red-haired beauty stared at Henry and waved her hand, take him for a blood test, I want to see the report immediately. Two expressionless elite city guards walked up, one on each side, holding Henry's arms and leading him out. Henry glanced at the strong bodies under the city guard uniforms and the short swords on their waists, immediately dismissing any plans to resist on the spot. He recognized Red Snake Lady Bella, one of the challenge scenes in the city of Sea Blue, Valhalla Alchemy Lab, one of the bases of the budding organization. In the initial version, Lady Bella, this boss, had made countless newbie adventurers born in Sea Blue City cry for their parents. She was called Retired Lady in the tavern, and in the future, she became a powerhouse of the Cult Alliance, surpassing the disaster level, and was crowned the title of Goddess of Death, famous throughout the Broken Star Ring. Henry smiled bitterly to himself, his situation was really cold, his heart as cold as icy. Henry was taken back to the alchemical laboratory for a blood alchemy test, the environment and terrain of the knight's fortress were unknown, as was the number of armed personnel. With his virtually non-existent combat abilities as a newbie, any rash resistance would be suicidal. The well-trained guards in the stone corridor were likely to have level 5 to 8 secondary professions as spies, the strong among ordinary people. If he remembered correctly, Bella at this time was an execution knight of the magic user organization, an E-level magic user, with a magic power level of over 500 ona. Conservatively estimated, she could probably take on a thousand of him. I in the magic era 23333, a genius summarized the way of cultivating qi, establishing the same basic theory for all cultivation systems in the universe, completely opening a new era, and magic users began to shine. Sea of Stars was the stage for magic users, there were five magic systems in total, the magic power system, the warrior system, the mechanical magic system, the pure magic system, and the mental magic system. These were the main professions in Sea of Stars. By studying the profession's secret books, one could take up the profession, professions were divided into main professions and secondary professions. There were only five magic systems for the main professions, while secondary professions were diverse and did not require secret books, the first test that all newcomers faced when they entered Sea of Stars was to find the secret books of the profession and change their main profession, new characters could choose two types of starts. One was the regular start, where the system gave a never-dropping beginner's equipment set, a fixed amount of money, and then chose one of the fixed initial locations in the beginner's area. This start was stable, the other was the Wheel of Fate start, where the new character was involved in special events. There might be dangers, but there might also be opportunities. Henry's current situation was very similar to the Wheel of Fate start although the game had become reality, it was still the background he was familiar with, and he had a wealth of experience to rely on. Henry calmed down, not long after, the Blood Alchemy report came out. Bella took the data from Linas with a slight frown, no abnormalities in the blood test. Linas, the Valhalla potion mainly stimulates the brain. Perhaps we should open his skull to test brain activity. Open the skull and take out the brain, can I still live? Henry muttered to himself, Bella waved her hand to stop him, he is the first surviving test subject of the Valhalla experiment, we should not resort to destructive methods unless absolutely necessary. 
Henry's eyes flickered, perhaps he could make good use of this identity, Linas was indifferent to Bella's words. Such good material, it would be a pity not to study it thoroughly. Let's observe him for a while and see what abilities the Valhalla potion has enhanced. Bella narrowed her cold eyes, first, let's control his soul. Soul control, Henry's heart sank. Soul control was a common method of controlling subordinates. Players who were successfully soul controlled would automatically join that faction, but his life was now real, and the worst outcome was that his thoughts and consciousness would be truly altered, this was absolutely intolerable, the good news was that in the first era, the technology to directly alter memories had not yet appeared in the city of Sea Blue. The soul control method of the magic user organization was relatively primitive, using images and sounds to torture and reset people's thinking. Intelligence above 10 points could exempt soul control, the Valhalla potion had given him one point of stamina potential. Potential was a latent attribute that affected attribute growth. Different races had different basic potentials. Looking at the whole world of Sea of Stars, human potential was of medium level, with the highest intelligence talent. Originally, his blood was very fragile, this one point of stamina potential was very useful to Henry. High concentration, increased learning and production speed by 10%, improving efficiency. Low-level mental toughness added three points of mental resistance, equivalent to an additional three points of intelligence. To exempt soul control, he was still three points short of intelligence. The chance of adding to intelligence by upgrading the civilian profession and randomly increasing one point of attribute and one point of free attribute point is too small. Henry was very self-aware. In the past, when he was drawing lots, he always suspected that he had distant relatives buried in the black soil of Africa. If there was a god blessing him, it must be the goddess of disaster. Compared with this, getting a new profession was undoubtedly a safer approach. At this time, Henry could not move freely, but the random start could not be a dead end at the beginning, there must be opportunities for players. He suddenly paused, saying that he was now a non-player character, he might not have the protection of the system god, wouldn't it be so pitiful? Take him to the soul control room. Bella waved her hand and left the room. It was still the two serious armed guards who moved him from left to right. The one on the left seemed to owe him 300,000, and the one on the right seemed to have been constipated for 10 days. His expression was exactly the same as that of the landlord every time he came to collect the rent. The group came to another room, which was filled with many complex mechanical instruments. Linas went to adjust the machine, Grim and Stern pressed Henry on the chair, and the wall 10 meters away was a row of glass bookcases. Henry turned his head to look at the bookcase, and a row of book titles jumped into his eyes. Tom's basic mechanical knowledge, on human and lizard genes, reads. Hypothesis. It seemed to be the reserved material book of the researcher, wait, there are professional knowledge books in it. There is no road to heaven. Henry was overjoyed, the two guards were watching him closely from behind, and it seemed that any movement of his would provoke an attack, but Henry didn't hesitate at all, he stood up abruptly and walked towards the bookcase, this action startled the others, Grimm and Stern completed the action of drawing the bow and aiming in 0.6 seconds, with the black hole of the bow and arrow pointing at his back. Henry's face remained unchanged, he didn't stop, and muttered to himself, don't shoot, my. Little life, one arrow will kill me, the next second, Linas's voice came from behind, wait, let's see what he wants to do. Grim and Stern hesitated for a moment, then released their fingers from the bowstring, Henry breathed a sigh of relief, he had bet right, as long as he didn't show any aggressive tendencies, the identity of the first successful test subject would be his amulet, his unconventional behavior would only be regarded as an experimental effect. Tom's basic mechanical knowledge, a basic knowledge book of the mechanical system, this was his goal, he took the book from the bookcase and started to flip through it. The content of the book was all about mechanical theory, those large sections of theory and detailed drawings were difficult to understand, Henry patiently read for 10 or so seconds, and finally the panel popped up information. Sure enough, it can. Henry was delighted, although he didn't understand, the system would automatically judge and help him learn the knowledge in it, Linas on the side was full of doubts, the test subject's behavior seemed to be learning, could it be that the experiment increased his learning ability, for the sake of observation, Linas did not stop Henry, the room was silent, only the rustling sound of turning pages remained. The speed of turning the pages got faster and faster, Henry's face was expressionless, but his mood was slightly anxious, every second that passed now was not only time, but also his freedom, with a bang, the door opened again, and Bella walked in. Seeing this scene, she frowned, what's going on? It's like this. Linas explained, and also mentioned his guess about the Valkyrie experiment. You mean his learning ability has been enhanced? Linas, this is the preliminary observation conclusion, if you allow me to open his brain for testing, I can give you a more accurate conclusion. Henry couldn't help but mutter, this old man is so keen on cutting people's brains, how much does he like eating brain marrow? Bella waved her hand to reject Linas's request, if the test subject's brain was enhanced, it might be more important to the knight's fortress than training a spy, 
It needed to be soul controlled immediately, instilling loyalty to the fortress, she turned to Linas and said, Is the soul control device ready? It's been adjusted. Linas pointed to the instruments in the mechanical research room. Henry's ears pricked up, so this was the place for soul control. Well, he had to hurry up then, just then, a new prompt appeared on the panel with a ding, a surge of heat appeared out of nowhere, coursing through his body, clearing his mind, unlike simply learning a skill in the game, the mechanical knowledge that he couldn't understand before all became understandable, deeply imprinted in his mind, turning into real knowledge. This change almost made it difficult for Henry to maintain his surface paralysis disguise, and he was so scared that he almost threw the book away, can you really learn things from the game? What a joke, then why hasn't the Earth Federation roared to dominate the stars in the more than 10 years that Sea of Stars the concept of losing the attribute bonus of Magic LV1 is equivalent to a status decline after releasing skills, which affects regular combat power and greatly increases the importance of combat details. Magic can slowly recover on its own, or it can consume physical strength to recover quickly. If magic is exhausted and still insists on using magic consuming skills, it will consume physical strength disproportionately. Once physical strength is exhausted, it will start to reduce life value. Magic users who are drained by their own abilities die this way. The magic level is an evaluation of the character's combat power, judging the rank of the magic user. Professor Stuart O'Neill of the Glorious Alliance created the magic level theory, unifying all complex energy algorithms into the magic unit, O'Neill. The calculation method is not addition and subtraction, but a complex function mode, with an overall upward trend. E, D, C, B, A, are the ranks of magic users. The standard magic level of E-level magic users is 100 O'Neill. Bella is a stronger magic user in the E-level. A-level is a watershed, also known as the disaster level, capable of causing destructive disasters on the planet's surface. Above A-level, there are higher ranks. Henry was once a strong man at that level, but for him now, it is still far away. Henry obtained a first-order magic profession, plus two free attribute points, which was only enough to pile up intelligence to six points, and he was still missing a key attribute point to exempt brainwashing. Henry was a bit depressed. Apart from leveling up, he had no other choice. The question was how to gain magic experience. It's obviously impossible to fight monsters, and the chance of triggering tasks is not great. Is it over? Is there no way out? Henry's eyes suddenly flashed, perhaps there was another way. He threw away the book, turned his head abruptly, and stared straight at the longbow at grim s waist, with a wooden and blank expression, as if he was in a daze. Bella frowned, swallowed the command that was about to be issued, and looked at Henry with the others in confusion, not knowing what he was going to do. Henry tensed his muscles, deliberately making his movements stiff, walked towards, Grim, and slowly reached out as much as possible, so that everyone could see his movements, and touched the longbow at, Grim's waist. Grim instinctively covered the longbow, found that Henry had no intention of grabbing, but just wouldn't let go, feeling like a child stubbornly holding the toy he wanted. It was also because Henry deliberately slowed down his movements that Grimm did not directly draw the bow and fire. Unload the arrow. Bella showed an interested look, she wanted to see Henry's plot. Grimm obeyed, pulled out the arrow cluster, and let Henry take the longbow. The moment he got the longbow, Henry learned the item information. Basic magic assembly gave him a lot of mechanical knowledge, the structure of the 73 type hornet longbow automatically appeared in his mind, Henry immediately understood how to assemble, the manufacturing in the game was simplified by the system, only need to read the bar, now he has to do it himself. This is more immersive than the game, and he also confirmed from this that he had traveled to a certain reality, not just a game. Suppressing the complex emotions in his heart, Henry clumsily disassembled the longbow into a pile of parts, and then started to reassemble it. The magic skill column simple repair glowed slightly. 40 seconds, the longbow was assembled. This speed is nothing to a knight, even a bit slow, but Bella and others did not forget that the current Henry had not received any training at all, just read a book for 10 minutes. Everyone was shocked. Is this the effect of the Valhalla potion experiment? Linus was excited, what a strong learning ability. If I could study his brain, maybe I could replicate. My god, how obsessed are you with brains? Henry kept repeating the process of disassembling and assembling. There are many ways to gain magic experience in the Sea of Stars, in addition to fighting monsters and tasks, technical and manufacturing experience is an important source of experience for the mechanical system, the mechanical system is weaker in early combat power, leaning towards logistics manufacturing. As he became proficient, the speed of disassembling and assembling the longbow kept increasing, gradually shortening to 20 seconds to complete. Bella finally came back to her senses and said solemnly, control his soul immediately. Just then, Henry completed the last assembly, and the magic experience finally accumulated to 200 points. Put it all into mechanical beginner. A heat flow was born, and a pleasant prompt sounded in his mind. That was close. Henry relaxed, letting the guards take back the longbow. 
Cold iron chains shackled his hands and feet, a metal frame held his head in place, and two eyelid retractors extended to keep his eyes open, preventing him from blinking. In front of the metal frame was a dark projection screen, with sound wave emitters on either side. Henry was immobilized in the chair, staring straight at the pitch-black projection screen. How long will the soul control take? Twelve hours. You keep an eye on him. Bella said, leaving with her team. Linus activated the switch, and the projection screen lit up, displaying bizarre images of triangles, circles, and ripples, constantly changing shapes and colors, creating a strong visual impact on Henry. The sound wave emitters played music that was sometimes agitated and sometimes soothing. The intense contradiction made Henry instinctively uncomfortable. He wanted to close his eyes, but the eyelid retractors kept his eyelids open, and his eyes gradually became bloodshot and sore. God, it was excruciating. This was a relatively primitive method of soul control. The basic principle was to use continuous visual and auditory conflicts to confuse the mind, and then imprint that thought steel seal after calibration and reset. Although this method was primitive, it had its advantages. It would not cause too much damage to the brain structure. In Linus's eyes, Henry's brain was of extraordinary value, like a precious piece of art. Linus's greedy gaze made Henry very angry, like a butcher looking at a pig, thinking about which piece of meat was the best. He had four free attribute points. After thinking about it, he invested two points to increase his intelligence to seven points, leaving two free attribute points for backup. You are undergoing soul control, low level, performing a mental judgment. Intelligence seven points, low level mental toughness plus three. Judgment passed, you are exempt from this soul control. The nausea gradually subsided, and Henry felt a little better. Linus was quietly complaining about Bella leaving him with the troublesome work of soul control, but he didn't know that right under his nose, Henry had already become immune to soul control. With the end of the last judgment, Henry endured the agonizing twelve hours, his back aching and his eyes dry. Linus timed it perfectly, shutting off the soul control device, and Henry felt like he had been reborn. Bella came over again. The leader had ordered her to personally control Henry's soul, and no mistakes were allowed. The restraints on his body were removed by Bella. The places where he had been bound were bruised due to poor blood circulation. Although Henry was in pain, he didn't look down. He had to act as if he had been soul-controlled, maintaining a blank gaze, without focus, staring straight ahead. Bella suddenly leaned close to Henry, their faces only ten centimeters apart. Her moist breath sprayed on his lips. Henry had no romantic thoughts at all. God, at such a dangerous moment, he couldn't afford to have any crooked thoughts. The scent of the woman's perfume clearly entered Henry's nose, making his nose a little itchy. He barely managed to resist the urge to sneeze. Bella asked in a soft, hypnotic tone, Who are you? After soul control, the identity prepared in advance is usually instilled. When faced with uncertain questions, the best response is silence. Henry manipulated his facial muscles to show a lost expression, as if he had been played with, and ignored Bella's words. I may not be good at other things, but I can definitely keep a straight face. Bella spoke softly, her words accompanied by moist heat entering his ears. Her burgundy curls scratched his neck, making it a little itchy. From the corner of his eye, he could see Bella's open knight's armor neckline, a large piece of smooth white almost blinded his eyes. However, Henry's heart was as calm as an ancient well, steady as a rock and holy as a god. He silently recited to himself, I've seen the beauty trick countless times, how could I be bewitched by your beauty? From today on, your name is Zero, the mysterious knights is your home, your country, the place where you willingly dedicate everything, you have the highest loyalty to the knights, all your thoughts are based on the interests of the knights, you cannot hide anything, you cannot do anything that harms the interests of the knights. Your existence is to execute the orders of the knights, and you are always ready to give your life for the knights. Linus added with a cold smile, you live as a man of the knights, you die as a ghost of the knights, even if you are made into a specimen, you can only obey. Bella asked, who are you? This time it was different from before, it was a question to judge whether the soul control was successful or not. Henry turned his thoughts and didn't answer immediately. Bella frowned and turned to look at Linus, her eyes cold. Linus muttered, I've been following the procedure for soul control, it can't be wrong. Just then, Henry finally spoke, deliberately dragging his tone, sounding slow, I am zero. Linus's eyes lit up, and he thought of an explanation, the Valhalla experiment enhanced Zero's learning ability, the side effect might be that it weakened his emotional communication ability. Bella thought of Zero's previous performance of focusing on books, indeed very slow to react to changes in the outside world, and believed this explanation, it seems the experiment is not perfect. Linus sneered, you're wrong, this is the perfect effect, what does a cannon fodder need feelings for? Take him to rest, I'll go to consult the leader. Safe for now. Henry finally breathed a sigh of relief. 
During the soul control, he had thought about portraying himself as slow to react, which could lower the enemy's guard. Although the time travel location is not very good, at least the timing is not too bad. The Valhalla experiment he had experienced was just a prototype version of the future night plan, which had not yet developed the loyalty seal to control the loyalty of the test subjects. If he had traveled to that time, he felt that it would be better to cut off his life early and die to suffer less. The goddess of luck finally smiled on me. Bella dialed an encrypted number, leader, zero situation is stable. A hoarse male voice came from the magic crystal ball, has the soul control been completed? I presided over it personally, there won't be any problems, what are your plans for zero? The purpose of the Valhalla experiment is to train soldiers, train him. Bella didn't comment, since it was the leader's arrangement, she had no objections. How is my sister? Ha, yeah, our deal is not like this. The male voice was somewhat teasing, I gave you the permission to visit once every two months, don't cross the line. Bella's fair hand clenched, her face changing. The male voice laughed hoarsely, the sound like sandpaper rubbing, grating on the ears, and hung up the magic crystal ball. The architectural tone of the Valhalla laboratory was white, located in the underground temple, the air was filled with a depressing smell, and the guards coming and going had eyes as cold as knives. After a night's rest, Henry was taken to a closed training ground, where Bella was waiting for him. He was not sure what the mysterious knights had planned for him, but he guessed that they would not abandon his learning ability and would definitely have many opportunities to gain mechanical technology experience. It seemed that he could not escape from this heavily guarded base in the short term, and Henry was prepared for a long-term confinement. Zero, from today on, you will train in swordsmanship and archery every day. Bella threw a set of knight's armor at Henry, put it on. It looked like a fight was about to start, and Henry quickly put on the armor. Bella twisted her foot, her high boots rubbing against the floor with a grating sound, bursting with tremendous kinetic energy. In the blink of an eye, she crossed the five-meter distance and rushed to Henry. Her long legs, wrapped in black knight's armor, came whipping at him with a whooshing wind. Bang! She was too fast. Henry was hit before he could react. Even though he was wearing armor, his chest bones still creaked, his face turned pale, he stepped back a dozen steps, clutching his chest and coughing violently. As expected of a superhuman, even without using her full strength, her speed was still several times faster than that of an ordinary person. Bella said indifferently, you have 30 seconds to rest, then we continue. The swordsmanship training was brutally simple, without a word of communication, just endless fighting. After two hours, Henry was exhausted, and there was not a part of his body that did not hurt. He seriously suspected that this woman had a sadistic tendency. Did all women who dressed like queens like this kind of thing? Bella, LV30, teaches you, basic swordsmanship, current progress 5%, after the training was over, Bella didn't say a word and turned to leave. A burly man came in, dragging the almost broken Henry to the archery range next door. I'm your archery instructor, and also the deputy leader of the knights, Baldo. The burly man introduced himself, looking fierce, with a ferocious scar on his with a thud, ten arrows were shot. Henry glanced at the score on the target board. Next to him, naturally not enough. Suddenly, he felt a sharp pain in his back as if a blade had grazed it. Henry shivered, controlling himself with great willpower to not cry out in pain. Turning around, he saw Baldo playing with a dark short sword, licking the blood on the blade with a sickly excited expression. He sneered, continue, if you don't meet my expectations, I'll give you a cut. Let's see how much blood you'll shed today. Madman. Henry was furious. He touched his back and his hand was full of blood. One wall of the archery training ground was a one-way mirror, behind which was an observation room. Bella and Linus were watching this scene. Linus shook his head, such a valuable trainee, Baldo doesn't know how to cherish him. I might as well dissect him for research. A flash of disgust passed through Bella's eyes, then disappeared. She glanced at Linus, the mysterious knights won't agree to your request. Linus sneered, when the mysterious knights have drained his usefulness, they will eventually send him to my lab. I created him, he is my personal property. Bella knew Linus was telling the truth. This was the style of the mysterious knights, so she stopped talking. In the eyes of the mysterious knights, Henry was just a tool, not even a person. Baldo, LV15, teaches you basic archery, current progress 5%. Knight profession unlocked progress 1%, his arm was cut again. Each cut was not deep, but he had accumulated more than a dozen cuts on his body, and his clothes were soaked with blood. Baldo watched with interest as Henry, pale but silent, enjoyed the feeling of the short sword cutting through flesh and the smell of fresh blood. The blooming red, like a flower, was the most beautiful sight in his eyes. Why don't you scream? Baldo played with his short sword, his tone intoxicated, a toy that can't scream is not a good toy. Sick freak. Henry took a deep breath, wanting to punch Baldo's sickly smiling face, 
but he knew that such reckless action would only bring bad results. The correct approach was to ask for help, bring the helper down with him, and then everyone would happily argue, laughing and joking while calling out GG, saving the life wasted in a match. If it were his younger self, he would have slapped him twice and followed with a three-hit combo, but now it wasn't like he could respawn in a match. What could he do? He had to forgive his opponent like a knight. Laugh all you want now, there will be a time when you cry. Henry gritted his teeth, not out of anger, but pain. In the primary magical world with a magical background, potions that restore life and magic are items like life recovery potion and magic replenishment potion. However, in a setting like the heart of the ocean, red and blue potions are obviously the equivalent of healing tanks and healing ointments. After the infuriating shooting training, Henry was soaked in a healing tank full of healing ointment by the research scholars for two hours. His knife wounds scabbed over, and he could move normally, only feeling a dull pain when the wounds were disturbed. There was a vacant alchemy laboratory in the research fortress. Since he had shown talent in alchemy, he was placed here alone. He could use the alchemy tools, materials, and equipment in the room at will. In the corner of the room was a magic mirror, which Henry was not surprised by, as he assumed the research scholars were observing him at all times. The bookshelf against the wall was full, and Henry found several books on basic alchemy knowledge. The Heart of the Ocean in the Dragon Era 687 was one of the primary magical worlds. It had just come into contact with interstellar civilization not long ago and was transitioning from the ancient civilization era to the new era. The civilization level was still on the planet's surface, and the technology was similar to Earth. The alchemy technology that could be found was at most advanced knowledge. The alchemy knowledge tree had three branches, weapon proficiency, magic control, and manipulation skills. Each had 20 types of knowledge, divided into five levels, basic, advanced, high-end, cutting-edge, and ultimate. Professional skills were the growth tree of the player, the core system of the main profession. The first professional skill was used to obtain the main profession. After that, all professional skills required potential points to learn, and the knowledge level was also improved through potential points. There were three ways to gain potential points, leveling up, rewards from certain high-level tasks, and mastering a skill. With two potential points, he didn't plan to learn new professional skills for the time being. Professional skills were not urgent, and potential points had other uses. Many players spent all their potential points when leveling up was easy, and when they needed them, they were at a loss. As the character grew, potential points would become harder and harder to get, and each one was precious. Outside of training, all his time was free. Henry spent all of it on alchemy, striving to accumulate experience as soon as possible to escape this freedomless enemy camp. Time flew by. Henry gained experience through alchemy production and alchemy enhancement. As his technique became proficient, the perfection of basic alchemy production could be maintained at over 90%, and he gained a considerable amount of experience each time. If one type of alchemy was produced too many times, the experience would decrease until no experience was given. Fortunately, there was a dedicated weapon warehouse in the fortress with a variety of weapons, providing ample materials for him to gain production experience. The newborn alliance had no guard against Henry. They didn't think that an experimental subject whose past memories had been erased by the Alliance and who had been brainwashed would have any unexpected reactions like resistance. Henry maintained a silent, harmless, and low-key image, reducing everyone's guard against him. The Alliance had high hopes for Henry, but he knew that the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. He stored up experience and didn't level up. The research scholars were soon disappointed in him. This level of alchemy production could be achieved by trained logistics personnel and did not meet their expectations for the Valhalla experiment. After observing for a month, the research scholars stopped their 24-hour surveillance and unanimously concluded that the zero-number experimental subject was a failed waste product. They then invested their energy in improving the Valhalla potion. Henry no longer had to pretend under the magic mirror all the time, which was a relief. As the investment saw no return, the newborn alliance's patience with him was gradually decreasing. Only Linas and Baldo kept an eye on him. Linas was curious about Henry's mutation and proposed to the alliance several times to dissect Henry for more experimental data but all were rejected with the reason, wait a bit longer. Henry knew that according to the Newborn Alliance's style, he would eventually fall into Linus's hands, which put a lot of pressure on him. Baldo, on the other hand, made no secret of his fondness for torturing people, claiming it was a means to motivate experimental subjects to complete training. Since he couldn't torture his colleagues, the emotionally dull experimental subjects became his only choice. Due to the existence of healing ointment, his behavior was not stopped, and the researchers believed that appropriate torture was beneficial to stimulate the changes in the experimental subjects. Gradually, Henry began to become numb to the pain. He remembered every splash of blood from each knife and waited silently. Living in a den of enemies with no one to communicate with, Henry put more energy into studying alchemy. 
He took those cold metals and polished them into different shapes on the alchemy tools, assembling them into useful tools. This process gave him a sense of fulfillment. One by one, armed knights moved a large amount of materials out of the alchemy laboratory, and Henry watched silently from the side. The Alliance is very disappointed in you. From today on, your resource allocation will be reduced by 80%. A man with a flat head stood in front of Henry, a smirk of triumph and disdain on his face. He looked down on Henry with the eyes of a victor. He was the experimental subject Alfred, the second surviving experimental subject after Henry. I heard you were the experimental subject before me. The Alliance spent a lot of resources on you, but all you can do is play with these scraps. You're a failure. It was the right decision for the Alliance to let me take your place. Alfred's tone was contemptuous. He was an experimental subject completely controlled by the soul, and the Alliance was his faith. He had an inexplicable hostility towards Henry. Henry didn't want to waste his breath. It was unwise to cause conflict and expose himself. If the investment does not yield returns, the newborn alliance will decisively change its investment target. Therefore, after Alfred was born, the alliance withdrew most of the resources given to Henry. Henry had anticipated this. Alfred demonstrated the expected results of the Valhalla Institute's experiments. He had a good talent for combat, a strong body, and could quickly develop into an armed warrior. Since the Institute did not have alchemy maintenance personnel, Henry was able to retain the alchemy laboratory, responsible for maintaining and repairing magical weapons. However, the free alchemy parts and materials allocated each month were much less. He was treated by the Alliance as a failed experiment. Several nights passed by, seeing this scene, they openly mocked. Tisk, two poor creatures. Used for experiments, turned into cannon fodder, and completely soul-controlled. It's better to die than to become like them. Say less. What does it matter, they've already been soul-controlled anyway. Each pair of eyes was filled with indifference, exuding a sense of superiority as if looking at pets. Aren't experimental subjects just cannon fodder in the eyes of the newborn alliance? As the voices of discussion faded away, Henry lowered his eyes, hiding the sharpness in them. Half a year passed in a blink of an eye. During this time, Henry figured out the layout and personnel deployment of the Valhalla Institute. The Valhalla Institute was hidden underground, with a total of three floors. As a secret research institute, it was not large in scale and was hidden in a forest in the wilderness, supplied by magical teleportation. There were sixty armed knights stationed here. Bella was the director of the institute, and Linnaeus was in charge of the experiments. Every once in a while, the Alliance would send a batch of experimental materials, with erased memories for experiments. This base was the main research institute of the Valhalla project. Including Henry and Alfred, a total of seventy-eight successful experimental subjects were produced. In addition to this, the Newborn Alliance had more than a dozen research institute branches, mass-producing cannon fodder. Of these 78 successful experimental subjects, most were transferred to other places via flying magic carpets. Only Alfred led the nine most talented experimental subjects, forming a reserve elite squad, receiving training here. Since the organization reduced its attention to him, Henry's life became monotonous. Every day, besides training, he stayed in the alchemy laboratory to repair and assemble magical weapons, which basically became his own little world. The knights were accustomed to ignoring Henry's existence. When their eyes swept over Henry, there would be no pause, as if Henry was just like the wall, merely a background. The lack of attention gave Henry a great convenience. He gained a wealth of experience from his uninterrupted alchemy work, like a magic parasite, quietly drawing nutrients from the organization under everyone's eyes, and incidentally memorizing the construction of many basic magic weapons. These ubiquitous basic technological weapons, as long as they are assembled many times, can master the manufacturing method, which is not a blueprint skill recorded in magic books. The experience given by assembly and enhancement is separate. When Henry could no longer gain experience from assembly, he began to use enhancement modification to gain a new round of experience. He was very cautious. Every time he finished enhancing and modifying, he would return the magic weapon to its original state, hiding his abilities. Through training with Bella and Baldo, he mastered the skills of basic swordsmanship and basic magic shooting, and accidentally unlocked a talent specialty, well trained, which additionally increased 100 basic life points, providing more security for his life. He unlocked the secondary profession, Magic Scout, and his total level became 4. After continuous practice, simple repair and simple enhancement modification rose to level 4, basic swordsmanship and basic magic shooting rose to level 2. Alchemy requires a huge amount of money to grow, which is one of the limitations of alchemy. Fortunately, the organization provides materials for free. Until 90% of the magic weapons in the weapon warehouse had been assembled by Henry, the experience he could gain in the base finally reached its limit. 600,000 proficiency. The accumulation of half a year. 
the ratio of reality to gain time in the previous life was 6 to 1. Half a year was equivalent to a month in the previous life's reality. Without doing tasks or killing monsters, this amount was very considerable in the early stage. Only the alchemy system could create such a rich experience under limited conditions. Approve Linnaeus's request, let him dissect zero, he has requested many times. In the magic communication crystal, the Lord said. Bella frowned, you have also refused many times. The organization has invested resources in him and must get a return. The Lord's tone was indifferent, the only value of waste is to be disassembled for waste utilization. Zero is waste. Bella bit her lip and said, understood. The issue of zero was not the focus of this call. The Lord changed the subject, how is the training result of Alfred's experimental body squad? Very promising, huge potential. Very good, let them go to Black Crow Fortress for training. I have sent the Black Crow squad to pick them up. They will arrive in two or three days. That's the day I visit my sister. Bella's tone sank. You don't need to accompany the Black Crow squad on the mission. That's good. Strike. Bella exhaled sharply, her delicate fist exploding with a powerful force, like a stone bullet pounding towards Henry's chest, creating a popping sound in the air. Henry took the punch head-on, enduring the suffocating feeling in his chest. His large hand grabbed Bella's armor collar, twisted his waist, and threw Bella to the other side with a shoulder throw. Bella remained calm, her palms supporting her on the ground, she easily rolled over and neutralized the shoulder throw. Seeing this, Henry didn't pursue, standing in place and rubbing his chest. Is that all the progress you've made? Bella asked, her face full of dissatisfaction. Henry remained silent. He had been deliberately hiding his skills. Based on his performance, the Iron Rose Knights should have given up on him. But for the past six months, Bella had been training him every day, and today she was particularly hard on him. Bella didn't expect Henry to respond. She knew that Zero was a man of few words, like a stone statue devoid of emotions. Although she was in charge, she was actually quite idle, spending her days in the castle with nothing to do. Training Henry was one of her few activities. When she learned that the captain wanted to hand Henry over to Linnaeus, Bella felt complicated. Although the two hardly ever communicated, after half a year together, there were some unique feelings. Even common objects could be missed, let alone people. Perhaps it was a hint of attachment, Bella couldn't bear to see Henry being experimented on by the scum Linnaeus and turned into hundreds of pieces of meat. How many times had it happened? Those familiar faces disappeared on an ordinary day and never appeared again. The cold style of the Iron Rose Knights had cost her many friends. And, her sister, Bella sighed. If Zero could show his talent in combat at the last moment, perhaps the captain would change his mind. That's why she was training Henry so hard today. Unfortunately, miracles are not so easy to come by. The captain has agreed to let Linnaeus experiment on you with magic. Bella sighed. Strictly speaking, this was the first time Bella had said something to Zero that was unrelated to training. Bella didn't notice, but Henry's eyes sharpened for a moment before returning to normal. So the day has finally come. Henry had long expected that his performance would eventually lead to this outcome. For the Iron Rose Knights, useless people were those who needed to be discarded as soon as possible to recover the resources invested. But he didn't regret it at all. The level of attention was linked to the level of surveillance. If he had shown off his extraordinary abilities, he would only have been exploited more brutally. His status could never enter the core of the Iron Rose Knights, he would always be treated as a tool, at most a useful one. Otherwise, Henry wouldn't mind working for the Iron Rose. Suddenly, Henry noticed a portrait on the ground. It seemed to have fallen out of Bella's pocket when he threw her over his shoulder. He bent down to pick it up. It was a group photo. The background was a blue sea and sky, with a sunset hanging at the horizon, dyeing the sky with a rosy glow. The two little girls standing side by side were the main characters of the picture. One was Bella as a child, smiling brightly and lively. The other girl looked somewhat similar to Bella, but her hair was snow-white, gentle and well-behaved. Bella's face changed, and she quickly snatched the portrait back. Seeing that the picture was not damaged, she let out a sigh of relief, carefully put the portrait away, gave Henry a deep look, and left the training field. A message suddenly popped up on the magic crystal ball. Henry's eyes flickered. This was the first time he had triggered a mission in half a year. There was no need to hesitate, except. The mission was clearly triggered by the portrait. Coincidentally, Henry recognized the white-haired girl. That was Bella's sister, Aurora. Aurora also had magical abilities, but her magic was the polar opposite of Bella's. Bella was highly offensive, while Aurora's blood had strong healing abilities, even capable of extending life and resurrecting the dead. Because of her valuable abilities, Aurora was brainwashed and controlled by the Iron Rose Knights. 
They not only exploited her magic but also used it as a threat, forcing Bella to do a lot of bloody work for the Iron Rose Knights. The only thing Bella cared about was her sister. At the end of the First Era, the war between the Six Nations and the Iron Rose Knights entered a heated stage. The war was urgent, and the Iron Rose Knights dismembered Aurora, using her flesh and blood to make countless healing potions that were as effective as a second life. They achieved a great victory on the battlefield. Bella, who was on the front line, didn't find out what had happened until several months later. Bella completely collapsed. The Iron Rose Knights had anticipated her reaction and immediately sent a large number of experts to capture Bella and imprison her. Bella suffered inhuman torture in the dungeon. Her deep-seated hatred gave her a terrifying resilience. She endured all the torture and eventually found an opportunity to escape. From then on, Bella became cold-blooded and brutal, using countless lives to develop magic, resorting to any means to become stronger, and completely fell into the evil camp. In the end, she became the goddess of death, in the broken star, a name that made people shudder. The current Bella, although cold, was a million times kinder compared to the future goddess of death who regarded countless lives as dust and destroyed civilizations. If he had the chance, Henry would like to help her and change Bella's tragic future. Not out of pity, but to avoid trouble. In his previous life, Bella was a crazy woman who killed anyone she caught. Henry had the misfortune of encountering Bella dozens of times, each time resulting in his battleship being destroyed and suffering huge losses. To change Bella's future, the key was Aurora. But for now, Henry didn't have the ability to do so. Escaping was the top priority. Every two months, Bella would leave the alchemy lab for a fixed period. In two days, it would be time for Bella to leave again, and he had enough experience stored up. The opportunity had finally come. Back in his own alchemy workshop, Henry called out the magic crystal ball. He now had three professions, civilian, spy, and junior mechanic. The civilian profession could be ignored. The other two were his capital for escaping from the alchemy lab. Among the five major professional systems, the mechanical system was relatively weak in the early stage, but he didn't regret it at all. The mechanical system was his best profession. The mechanical system was more oriented towards logistics and life professions in the early stage, but after the high-end knowledge of the professional knowledge tree was opened in the third era, the combat power of the mechanical system soared, gradually becoming popular, and even competing with the martial arts system, which had the most players. In the later stage, a high-level mechanic was equivalent to a star army. The skills of the mechanical system were famously numerous. Each invention of a blueprint was equivalent to a skill, and there were thousands of blueprints in the mechanical system, so the potential for later development was high. Different skills could be combined to create countless combat modes, such as trap flow, position flow, heavy artillery flow, sniper flow, legion flow, mecha flow, etc. But the downside was also obvious. To train a mechanical system expert, the required experience was several times that of other professions, after some thought, Henry invested his experience into the junior mechanic profession, leveling up like crazy, each profession has a maximum level of 10, and can only continue to level up after a job transfer. A total of 130,000 experience points were spent to upgrade the junior mechanic from level 2 to the maximum level of 10, providing an additional 8 points of stamina, 8 points of intelligence, 100 points of energy, 16 free attribute points, 8 potential points, and increasing the total level to 12. The main profession is usually prioritized for leveling up as it provides energy, offering the highest cost effectiveness. After reaching the maximum level of 10 as a junior mechanic, Henry temporarily did not meet the requirements for a job transfer. He then upgraded the spy to level 9, consuming 80,000 experience points. The spy profession gave him a total of plus 12 strength, plus 9 agility, plus 3 charm, 9 potential points, and 9 free attribute points, the total level reached 20. A character can have an unlimited number of professions, but every 20 levels is a bottleneck, requiring the completion of an advanced task to continue leveling up. The total level cap is unlocked with each epic update, with the first epic having a total level cap of 60. The game Magic Continent offers hundreds of professions, allowing players countless combinations. In the later stages of the game, personalization is crucial. There is no fixed growth strategy, and each character is different, maintaining the game's appeal, however, Henry found that his panel did not display a total level cap, meaning he could possess power beyond the player's epic to eye in the first and second epics, the player's activity area was basically the novice village, while in the depths of the magic continent, those large magic forces have always existed, but players could not reach them. Therefore, the epic is a restriction on players, and as a non-player character, he naturally does not have this constraint, the prerequisite for advanced knowledge is to learn five basic knowledge of a branch. The armed branch profession knowledge in the base is not complete, and he has no solution for this. He spent another 150,000 experience points to upgrade junior alchemy repair and junior alchemy enhancement to LV10 full level, gaining two potential points.
which are related to subsequent plans. He spent 10,000 experience points to upgrade Junior Alchemy Affinity to LV3. Based on his familiarity with Magic Continent, Henry spent 60,000 experience points to upgrade Junior Swordsmanship and Junior Archery to LV6, successfully gaining two new skills, Capture and Precision Shooting. The last 170,000 experience points were reserved by Henry IV, betting on alchemy formulas. Inventing alchemy formulas is the most important ability of the alchemy system. After upgrading the alchemy profession knowledge, you will automatically get alchemy formulas. Which is the first way to get alchemy formulas, the second is to obtain them from tasks or special non-player characters, which are special alchemy formulas and are generally rare, the third is to disassemble alchemy items and reverse engineer the alchemy formulas, but the conditions are harsh and a huge amount of experience is required, the fourth is the most important, knowledge fusion, which involves fusing two or more professional knowledge. If the combination is correct, a new alchemy formula can be developed, and each fusion consumes experience, there are countless combinations of 60 kinds of knowledge, and each combination hides many alchemy formulas, but each fusion will only develop one of them. Some alchemy formulas even have hidden prerequisites, so it is difficult to figure out how many alchemy formulas a combination can develop, the fusion experience of the same combination will continue to accumulate. Even if a new alchemy formula is not developed, the experience will not be returned, so it is also called betting on alchemy formulas, this is the characteristic of the alchemy system, which creates the variable combat style of the alchemy system and is the source of its power in the later stages. It is also a bottomless pit that consumes experience, before his time and space travel, players had found thousands of combination matches. With more than 10 years of experience, Henry had an impression of 80 to 90% of them. Choosing the alchemy system had a huge advantage, which could minimize the weakness of the alchemy system in the early stage. There were a few rare alchemy formulas, which were artifacts of the alchemy system in the early stage, of course, there is also a rarely used function, free creation. According to the player's conception, they can create their own alchemy items, but 99% of the time, what they create is a pile of scrap metal. The success rate depends on the rationality of the conception, the quality of the materials, the level of professional knowledge, expertise, tools, and other aspects. Until the epic before Henry's time and space travel, no player had fully developed the self-creation function. Even if they occasionally created a self-created alchemy item, the effect was not as good as the alchemy formula item. This function has always been regarded as a chicken rib, the profession upgrade gave him 19 potential points, and the two skills at full level gave him two points, a total of 21 potential points, Henry took out the professional knowledge book he had prepared from the bookshelf, took a deep breath, and poured a large amount of knowledge into his mind. Henry's head was swollen, operating at overload, as if it was about to explode, causing his face to twitch with pain. It took a full 10 minutes to ease. One by one, the alchemy knowledge he had never understood before was deeply imprinted in his mind, Henry spent another two potential points to upgrade junior alchemy and junior biological alchemy to LV2 each, improving their mastery. These two basic alchemy knowledge combinations at level 2 can develop six formulas. The fusion experience of the same combination doubles each time. The basic combination requires 10,000 experience points for the first fusion. 170,000 experience points are enough for me to fuse four times. I must bet that thing out in these four times. Henry was nervous, his palms full of sweat. He dragged Junior Alchemy LV2 and Junior Biological Alchemy LV2 together on the magic crystal ball, yes, his brain was dizzy for a moment, and a brand new alchemy formula appeared out of thin air. Not this one. Henry clenched his fist and continued, my god, the most rubbish formula has come out, it's not this one either, again. Got it. Henry excitedly slapped the table, shaking off an alchemy material. Ha, strength enhancement potion. That's what I want, half a year's accumulation, almost squandered. Dot, name, Henry Race, human template, non player character total level, 20 experience, 100k secondary profession, civilian LV1, spy LV9 main profession, junior alchemist LV10 life, 320 320 physical strength, 434 434 attributes, strength 21, agility 17, stamina 22, intelligence 15, magic 1, charm 5, luck 1 free attribute points, 27 energy, 120 LV3 LV1, LV2, LV3, energy level, 4855 rank, F compared to the weakest magician, you are a big ant. Expertise, high concentration, low level mental toughness well trained, additional 100 basic life point skills, alchemy, junior alchemy affinity LV3, junior alchemy repair LV10, simple enhancement modification LV10, alchemy formula, flying potion LV1, alchemy formula, biological repair potion LV1, alchemy formula, strength enhancement potion LV1, spy, junior swordsmanship LV6, Increases unarmed attack power by 6% junior archery LV6, increases shooting correction by 6% junior capture. 
Technique LV1 increases parry counterattack rate by 3%, unarmed attack power by 2%, junior precision shooting LV1 increases shooting correction by 3%, long range critical hit rate by 2%, potential points, 17 professional knowledge tree, armed, basic assembly LV1 junior alchemy LV2 junior biological alchemy LV2, energy, control, influence. Zero legend, zero equipment, none, half a year's accumulation, directly up to level 20, combat power skyrocketed, a total of 27 free attribute points. Henry spent 5 points to raise his intelligence to 20, meeting the manufacturing requirements of the strength enhancement potion formula, and the rest were saved to deal with emergencies, the last step is to arm himself, looking at the alchemy materials all over the floor, Henry chuckled. I'll show you the consequences of challenging an alchemist. Action begins. The disguised building of Valhalla Research Institute on the ground is a deserted farmland, with barren fields and dilapidated farmhouses. The farmland is enclosed by electrified wire fences, with only one gate, surrounded by endless forests, with many broken building ruins in the forest. This area used to be a small city in the old civilization era of the Blue Sea Kingdom, which is now abandoned. Decades ago, the Blue Sea Kingdom aligned with the interstellar forces, gained various universal knowledge, entered a new civilization era, and the social environment changed dramatically. Many cities were abandoned, leaving only a desolate atmosphere of the post-apocalyptic era. A Black Hawk spaceship landed on the deserted farmland. Six fully armed black clothed special agents walked down from the spaceship, wearing black goggles, with cold faces, exuding a cold blooded aura that kept people at bay. Night Raven Team 3, I'm the captain, codenamed Silver Sword, ordered to transfer the Valhalla experimental team. Silver Sword's tone was as hard as stone. Bella gathered her long hair blown by the wind, stirred up by the wing, and said indifferently, Whatever, there are carriages in the stable, I requisitioned the spaceship, don't waste my time. Alfred, with nine members of the experimental team, came to Silver Sword, stood tall and said, Experimental body Alfred, salute to the commander. Silver Sword was indifferent, come with us. Yes. Alfred's face flushed with excitement. Going to the headquarters for training was a great honor in his eyes. The Night Raven team and the experimental team came to the stable, lifted the jungle green dust cover used for disguise, revealing several high-powered bulletproof carriages. The two teams drove the carriages through the only gate and disappeared into the forest. Bella boarded the spaceship and flew away. She suddenly felt uneasy, with a sense of foreboding. Strange, it feels like I've overlooked something. Bella frowned. Today was the day the leader approved her to visit her sister, Bella didn't think much about it. Mechanical workshop. After installing the last hinge, Henry put down the wrench and wiped the sweat from his forehead. In front of him was a hollow iron armored mechanical arm, which looked like a large silver alloy arm armor. The outer armor was made of manganese steel alloy, which was tough and hard, suitable for forging into weapons and armor. To reduce weight and shock resistance, the power arm interior used lightweight metal as the skeleton. All parts were ground by the workshop's lathe. The seeds workshop and equipment were very advanced, and the parts were ground to fit perfectly. These metal materials were readily available, and although the base had reduced his mechanical workshop's material share, it was not difficult to find some good metals. When forging, he used his left arm as a reference. His left hand could fit perfectly into the mechanical arm for control. Hooking his fingers could activate the hinge switch. The power came from the small engine and air pump hidden in the core of the power arm, which was heavily protected by armor and could provide a lot of power. The blueprint included all the manufacturing details, plus Henry's own experience, from grinding, processing to final assembly, the process was very smooth. In Henry's advanced perspective, the control system and power system of this light power arm were relatively backward, and the materials used were very common. But for now, this was the best weapon he could forge. It was excellent equipment in the early stage, and the success rate of escape could be increased by at least 20%. Moreover, he found that although making it himself was much more difficult than reading the game, it also gave him room for free play, and the benefits far outweighed the disadvantages. The weapon level is divided from low to high as follows, gray, ubiquitous, white, ordinary, green, good, blue, excellent, purple, excellent, pink, rare, orange, legendary. The panel prompted him to complete the first production, gaining 3,000 experience points. The rewards for creative technical work were much more generous than assembly and enhancement. Henry's current strength value was 21 points, so he spent 4 free attribute points to add strength to meet the equipment requirements. In the spare time of grinding in the blacksmith's shop, Henry used the simple enhancement modification to modify a 73 type horned hand crossbow with an attack power of 3847, which was more powerful than the ordinary version. This was the first weapon he fully enhanced. Good things were of course kept for his own use. As long as he got arrows, this crossbow could exert its power. Henry also used the scraps from making the strength arm guard to grind a tactical short sword. 
The blade was mixed with tungsten steel, which was very sharp, with an additional 10 points of close attack power. Anyway, the materials were not used for nothing. Since Henry had been low-key for a long time, there was no one observing him 24 hours a day. Iron Eagle Fortress only had Henry as a mechanical craftsman. For caution, he first made various parts and then welded and assembled them at the end. Those guards who occasionally glanced at the observation crystal screen didn't realize what Henry was making. They thought he was repairing weapons as usual, so the process went smoothly without being discovered. Henry hid the light power arm guard and the enhanced hornet hand crossbow. The item bag was actual weight, not another dimensional space. Because the equipment was too conspicuous, he couldn't carry it with him. Hiding the short sword around his waist, Henry walked out of the room and came to the hall on the first underground floor. Usually, when there was nothing to do, most spies would play cards here to pass the time. Many of his intelligence came from the daily conversations of these spies. Everyone chatted without avoiding him, which gave him the opportunity to probe for news. Indeed, pretending to be slow was a wise choice. I really envy Bella for being able to leave the lab staying in this damn place every day is suffocating. She is an executor of the organization, her status is much higher than ours. Bella's face and figure. If I could play with her for one night, I wouldn't mind living three years less. Are you new here, kid? The last person who dared to provoke Bella, not even a single hair was left. Do you think she became an executor for nothing? Do you mean, she's a superpower? Humph, of course. Henry's eyes flickered. Not having to confront Bella directly was good news. He had no confidence in defeating her. He stood up and left the hall without attracting attention. Every corridor had observation crystals. To escape, he had to clear the observation room first. The observation room was on the third floor underground. Henry pretended to wander aimlessly, approaching the observation room. The armed guards he encountered along the way ignored him. Two armed guards were stationed at the entrance of the observation room, and there would be two more on duty inside. That meant he had to swiftly and silently take out four guards. It wasn't easy, but he had rehearsed it thousands of times in his mind and was not nervous. There was an observation crystal at the corner of the corridor of the observation room. Seeing no one around, Henry took out the soft bread left from breakfast, soaked it in his mouth, and threw it onto the lens of the observation crystal, blocking the view. Without advanced magic disruptors, he had to resort to this old method. After waiting for three seconds and seeing no one coming out of the observation room, Henry was certain. He had heard from the on-duty guards complaining to their colleagues that Iron Eagle Fortress had never been in danger, so the guards on duty would not take their job seriously and were slacking off. Henry composed himself and approached the entrance of the observation room, only to be stopped by two armed guards. No entry for idlers. This is zero, talking to him is useless, just send him away. The guard on the left nodded and reached out to push Henry's shoulder. Just as they were completely off guard, Henry made his move. He grabbed the left guard's wrist and drew a tactical dagger from his waist with lightning speed, stabbing it up through the right guard's jaw and into his brain. The dull sensation of the blade entering flesh was clearly transmitted to his wrist through the handle. The right guard's expression froze on his face, and he died instantly without making a sound. Henry released the dagger and swung his arm back. The left guard hadn't reacted yet when his head was held in Henry's arms, in a cross-neck lock. As a trained security personnel, the guard knew how deadly this position was and tried to pry Henry's arm open in panic. The next second, Henry twisted hard, and with a crack, the man in his arms stopped struggling. It took less than a second to end two lives. Two pale blue damage markers, minus 162, and, minus 171, popped up above their heads, indicating lethal damage, which was the maximum health of the target. Holding the bodies to let them fall silently, Henry took a deep breath. The swift and concise killing he had just performed had been rehearsed countless times in his mind. Killing didn't bring him any moral dilemma, which secretly terrified him. Had he lost his humanity due to the recent oppression? In his previous life, the largest animal he had killed was probably a timid rodent in his rural hometown. Now, killing people felt no different, and he felt an urgent need for psychological therapy. The panel prompted that he had obtained the information of the two men. They were level 7 spies, with strength of 10, stamina of 15, and health around 150. This was the standard strength of most armed guards in the laboratory, with minor variations due to individual physique. Henry found four hornet crossbow bolts on the bodies and held the dagger in his palm, quietly pushing open the door to the observation room. The blue light from dozens of surveillance screens illuminated the room. Henry saw a scene that left him dumbfounded. The on-duty Grimm and Stern were affectionately hugging each other, their lips only a centimeter apart. Hearing the door open, they turned their heads in panic. The three of them froze, creating an awkward atmosphere. Henry was stunned, his heart filled with indescribable sorrow. His vision blurred. 
Henry felt extremely troubled. It was an awkward situation. Should he pretend nothing happened and say, please stop your duel? He neither supported nor discriminated against this special kind of affection. He felt that what he saw was not just two men, but two lonely hearts. The high-pressure tasks brought them endless stress, which could not be vented. Therefore, some special feelings sprouted among the companions they interacted with every day. It was not their fault, but the fault of the era, no, the world. Although his brain was thinking about the tense situation, Henry's reaction was not slow at all. He gripped his short sword and charged directly at, Grim, like a cheetah. Grim woke up from his dream and hurriedly pulled out his spear. Henry seized the opportunity to swing his sword. If it weren't for, Stern, kicking Grim away in a hurry, the sword would have cut off Grim's wrist holding the spear. The surprise attack was avoided, but Henry was not discouraged. He flicked his finger, and the short sword turned a circle, changing from a reverse grip to a regular grip. He stabbed fiercely into the abdomen of Stern, who couldn't avoid it in time, and punched Stern's neck with a clenched fist. His movements were smooth and fluid, knocking him unconscious on the spot. Minus 42. Minus 45. Henry's strength was twice that of these guards. His punches and kicks could crush the guards, causing additional negative states such as dizziness and broken bones. Good, one threat eliminated. Henry thought to himself. Grim, who was pushed away, rolled back to create a safe distance and raised his crossbow to shoot. If the sound of the crossbow was heard, it would alarm the entire fortress. Henry reacted swiftly, pouncing on Grim and wrestling him to the ground. His fingers immediately jammed the trigger and grabbed Grim's wrist holding the crossbow, smashing it hard on the ground. With a cry of pain, the crossbow was immediately dropped. Henry didn't stop there. He headbutt Grim's nose. The forehead is one of the hardest parts of the human body. This blow, coupled with Henry's 25-point strength bonus, broke Grim's nose with a muffled hum. His nose bled profusely, and he fell into a daze. Henry seized the opportunity, rolled over to Grimm's back, locked Grimm's waist with his legs, and wrapped his arms around Grimm's neck, pressing hard. Grimm immediately turned purple, had difficulty breathing, couldn't make a sound, and his legs kicked wildly, like a drowning struggle. Naked choke. After a stalemate for more than ten seconds, Grimm's resistance gradually weakened, and he passed out due to excessive pressure on his neck. That was close. Henry got up panting, feeling a bit sentimental. If he were a knight, he wouldn't be so tired. The knight class is the most popular profession in Star C. There's no other reason, it's just very heroic. The names of the moves are so cool, like Flame King's Earth Split Wave, Magic Piercing Light Killing Cannon, Star Destruction Fist. Whether the power can reach the effect of the name is hard to say, but at least it can ignite youthful passion. If you don't shout the name of the move when you use it, you always feel that you can't exert all your power. Although most players think it's too embarrassing, based on Henry's experience of playing a knight's small account, once you accept the setting, it actually feels quite good. Who hasn't had a passionate youth? Moreover, the knight's fighting style is simple, just mindlessly hammering away. Compared to the alchemist class with the highest difficulty to master, it's like the difference between Angry Griffin and Shadow of the Soul. They're like two different games with different styles, the difficulty is too friendly. Henry has a basic fighting and grappling skill bonus, plus his experience playing a knight's small account, his fighting ability can be considered excellent, at least it's no problem dealing with ordinary people. Henry ended the unconscious Grimm and Stern with his short sword. At this time, a little bit of mercy is cruelty to himself. He casually found four crossbow quivers from their bodies. Without time to rest, he moved the two bodies outside the door in, wiped off the blood in the corridor with one person's armor, smashed all the lookout mirrors with crossbow arrows, checked again that there was no problem, then locked the door and left the lookout tower. His expression was calm and composed, no one could tell that he had just killed four people, and it was his first time killing. It has to be said that having a poker face is a good habit, no one can see through what you're thinking. Clearing the lookout tower is like removing the eye in the sky hanging over your head, finally no need to sneak around. Back on the second floor, a guard suddenly stopped Henry. Lord Linus wants to see you. Henry paused slightly, his eyes flickering. As expected, Linus couldn't help it. He knew this day would come, but he didn't expect it to be such a coincidence. Thinking about it carefully, this might be beneficial to him. Linus is an important alchemy experiment leader, with a high status, and one of the few people who have the keys to the fortress. Henry had planned to deal with him, but he took the initiative to come to him. Following the guard, he arrived at Linus's private alchemy lab. The light here was dim, and the shelves on the wall held transparent containers, each containing human organs preserved in formaldehyde. It looked like the collection room of a psychopathic killer. Linus looked at Henry with fiery eyes. 
He was very happy now and said enthusiastically, the organization has finally handed you over to me. As long as I dissect you, I can research why you are different from other test subjects. Once I have extracted your value, your body is worthy of becoming my specimen. The first test subject, how memorable. Henry was silent like a stone, his expression unclear in the dark. That guard, secure him for me, don't let him struggle and ruin my experiment. After Linus finished his instructions, he turned his back to the two of them, taking out a series of bizarrely shaped dissecting knives and skull openers from his toolbox. They had cut through countless bodies, giving off a chilling brightness. Suddenly, Linus heard a dull thud behind him. He turned around in confusion, only to find that Henry had somehow gotten behind him, looking down at him from above, occupying all his vision. Before he had time to think, Linus suddenly felt a sharp pain in his chest. He looked down in a daze to see a short sword deeply embedded in his heart. His strength quickly drained away, and the dissecting knife clattered to the floor. Linus was horrified. He looked into Henry's eyes, those eyes that were always dull in his memory, but now they were as sharp as a knife, making him feel like he was falling into an ice cellar. Looking past Henry's body, Linus saw the guard lying on the ground, his neck twisted in a strange way, his body still twitching due to nerve reflexes. Linus looked blank. He had never thought that Zero might resist. He had witnessed the entire process of Zero's birth to being mind-controlled. Where did the error occur? Right, the magic lookout sphere. With his last hope, Linus looked towards the magic lookout sphere in the corner of the wall. Henry said indifferently, give up, everyone in the lookout tower is dead. This tone. It's not something that dull Zero could say. Linus shuddered, his face ashen. Using his last strength, he asked hoarsely, this, this half year, you've been pretending? Henry nodded. How is that possible? Everyone was fooled by you. Linus seemed to have heard something incredible. In this world, nothing is impossible. Henry twisted the short sword with force. Linus fell to the stone floor of the castle with regret and shock, his eyes wide open, refusing to close even in death. I, but I'm your, creator, he couldn't believe until his death that he would fall into Henry's hands. Henry donned the knight's armor and left Linnaeus's underground laboratory. Many people in the holy castle knew that he had been taken away by Linnaeus, so he couldn't appear in his original identity for the time being. Only four people had a deep impression of him, Bella, Alpha, Linnaeus, and Alfred. The first two were not in the holy castle, and Linnaeus had been eliminated by him. As long as he didn't encounter Alfred, he was temporarily safe. The door to the underground laboratory was an 80 centimeter thick magic iron door. Even if all the explosives in the armory were used up, it couldn't be blasted open. The only way was through the magic door lock. Only three people's magic keys were eligible to open the door, and Linnaeus was one of them. A pure white card was quietly lying in Henry's jacket pocket at the moment. However, there were guards next to the door lock, and the first floor underground was the knight's dormitory. Everyone here knew the three white card holders, so it was impossible to deceive them. Next to the guard was an emergency door closing device. As long as the gate was pulled down, the door lock system would be manually closed, and the door would be completely locked. If Henry swaggered to open the door with the white card, he would have no way out and would be surrounded in 10 seconds. By then, it would be like catching a turtle in a jar. A bullet could take away dozens of his blood points. If he was focused on, he could probably hold on for 0.8 seconds if he was lucky. Well, it was very heroic, a good way to die, and he decided to keep this version as an option. Henry's plan was to cut off the pigeon communication and buy himself a few hours of vacuum period, which was the safest way. The original plan was to destroy the magic energy supply, but the door lock system was powered, and cutting off the energy would stop it from working. The pigeon tower was hidden in the wall of the third floor underground, and it needed blacksmith tools to break the wall. The blacksmith's shop was located on the second floor underground, and Henry had to go back and get his equipment first. However, plans always lag behind changes. When he was only 50 meters away from the blacksmith's shop, a big hand suddenly stretched out from the side and pressed against his chest. Henry's eyes condensed, and the person who stopped him turned out to be Baldo. It was really bad luck. The holy castle was so big, how could he just happen to run into Baldo, who he least wanted to see right now? Who could he complain to about this luck? Was Murphy the incarnation of fate? Which group are you from? I've never seen you before, Baldo asked suspiciously. Henry lowered his head, covering his face with his hat, I'm new, I belong to group B. Baldo looked doubtful, when did the new people come? Why don't I know? I seem to have heard your voice somewhere. Lift your head and let me see your face. Henry glanced out of the corner of his eye and saw that Baldo's hand was already touching the pistol on his waist, ready to fire at any time. Three knights who sensed something was wrong also came over. What to do? 
If discovered, Baldo would definitely send someone to find Linnaeus. Once Linnaeus's body was discovered, his actions would be exposed. So, should he have dismembered and destroyed the body before leaving? No, 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 for the sake of his appetite in the next few days, let's not do such a thing. Die here? Don't have that kind of thought, whatever you do, you have to have confidence, right? If it's clear that you'll die if you fail, don't think about defeat before you've considered victory. It's troublesome. I didn't want to use plan B. What are you talking about? Baldo didn't hear clearly. Henry suddenly raised his head, revealing a dangerous smile, I've always wanted to tell you, you donkey-headed ghost should see a psychologist. Zero Knight? Taking advantage of the moment of shock, Henry made the first move, stabbing his dagger fiercely towards Baldo's chest. Baldo's pupils contracted sharply, and he leaned back in a hurry. The blade scraped past his chin, cutting open the skin and bringing up a string of blood beads. Throw the spear! The three knights hurriedly drew their spears, but they had just come too close, less than three steps away from Henry. This distance was not suitable for spear combat. Henry took a big step across the three-step distance, and his fist, with a strong momentum, hit the first person's cheek. If there was a slow-motion replay, you could see the skin of the face hit by the fist shaking like ripples, severe injury, this heavy punch directly stunned the opponent, who staggered and bumped into his two companions, and the three of them fell to the ground, Henry decisively turned around and sprinted towards the blacksmith's shop at a speed of fifty steps. The sound of the spear cutting through the air sounded behind him, and the spear tip brushed past him, sparking on the wall, Baldo, holding his bleeding chin, looked gloomy and raised his short sword to attack Henry crazily, catching up with him. All spies listened to the order, immediately reinforced the second-floor blacksmith's shop, target zero, the magic test subject is out of control. Baldo shouted to the pigeon, the knights patrolling each floor looked puzzled, as if they had heard an illusion. Zero is out of control? Are you kidding me? Isn't that test subject controlled by magic? Is this a drill? Are you stupid? I heard the sound of the spear. The spear whistled, and the sense of crisis was like a thorn in the back. Henry's mood suddenly became extremely calm. This was his special state of concentration, his mind was like ice, his reason was cold, and countless pieces of information gathered in his mind. The world in front of him turned into a crisscross grid, like a spider web, everything was connected. I can reach the blacksmith's shop in two heartbeats, Alfred will catch up in 3.7 heartbeats, the three knights can't pose a threat to me within 4.2 heartbeats, and the reinforcements will arrive in 25 to 35 heartbeats, Henry had been through countless battles, and his rich combat experience was the basis for him to maintain this state. He ran in a serpentine pattern, fully focused on avoiding attacks. Baldo pursued relentlessly. He didn't care about the reason for Zero's loss of control. He knew his duty was to catch Henry, and if necessary, he was even allowed to kill him on the spot, and then report it afterwards. Interesting, the little toy wants to resist. Baldo licked the fresh blood on his chin, his eyes fierce, this is the way you chose to die. Although he was caught off guard by Henry, Baldo still had strong confidence. He was a veteran spy with 20 years of experience. Even if Zero had an amazing learning ability, he had only been trained for half a year. Could he withstand his few moves? And looking at it this way, Zero was already in a panic, Henry rushed into the blacksmith's shop and slammed the door shut with a bang. He actually chose to hide in the room, this is a dead end, you're too naive. Baldo sneered, rushed to the door, raised his foot to kick the door open, quickly changed a sword sheath, ready to sweep a sword directly after opening the door, things changed suddenly, the door exploded into pieces with a bang, and the iron-armored arm flowing with metallic color broke through the door. The magic power source roared, and the silver-glowing iron-armored arm heavily hit Baldo's chest, fatal injury, the dull sound of bone-breaking, Baldo flew up like a broken sack, hitting the wall hard. Four or five of his ribs were broken, his short sword was thrown away directly, he vomited a mouthful of blood, and looked at Henry, who had changed his shape, in horror.at this time, Henry, with an iron-armored arm on his left hand, looked like a large arm guard, wrapping his arm. The magic gear was turning, making a creaking sound. The metal fingers moved flexibly, and the exposed magic pipeline sprayed out a stream of black smoke roaring with magic power, like a black cloud swirling around his arm. What kind of magic is this? Baldo stared in horror, not far away, three knights raised their spears, and Henry was faster than them. He raised his right hand and loaded the enhanced version of the 73-style spear with a sword sheath, and fired two shots, agility affects swordsmanship accuracy, and the skill comes with swordsmanship accuracy correction. At this time, Henry's swordsmanship was amazing. The spear tip hit the two people's eye sockets and throat respectively, hitting the vital points and causing fatal damage, directly killing the two. The third knight fired, and the spear tip whistled and shot over. Henry raised his iron-armored arm first, and with a clang, the spear tip was bounced off by the outer armor of the iron-armored arm, iron-armored arm, left, loses eight points of health. 
Henry fired another shot, sending the third person to the west. The knight stared wide-eyed before he died, unable to believe that the silent and dull zero knight would be so powerful, wasn't it said. Groups A and B of knights rushed to the second floor, staring in horror at the unrecognizable corpse of Baldo. Baldo, the butler, was killed. What happened here? Where did the enemy go? Why is there no response from the watchtower? Go and consult Scholar Linus immediately. Group C has found the body of Scholar Linus. Oh my god, all the knights gasped in shock, their faces filled with horror. Was all this done by Zero, who they remembered as having no combat power? The entire castle was thrown into chaos by Zero alone. The influential leaders either fled or died. The knights were stunned to find that there was no one left to give orders that wasn't the test subject indoctrinated. Had he been harboring hostility and waiting for the right moment to strike, thinking of this possibility, the knights were shocked to realize that Henry, under his low-key disguise, was like a sharp knife hanging over their heads, capable of taking their lives at any moment, like a killer hidden in the shadows. They had been completely unaware of this, and had instead overlooked Henry's existence everyone was suddenly filled with fear, breaking out in a cold sweat. Don't panic, there's only one enemy. Conduct a systematic search, free attacks are allowed. Group A, go to the armory. Group B, check the situation in the watchtower. Group C, go to the research room to protect the research materials. Group D, guard the main gate. No matter what Zero wants to do, if he wants to escape, he will definitely go to the main gate. Move! In this critical moment, the captain of Group A took over the command, his thinking clear, and loudly gave orders, the orders were clear, and the knights immediately sprang into action. There were 60 armed personnel in the castle, divided into groups A, B, C, and D. They usually worked at different posts, but would quickly assemble in case of emergencies, however, Henry had multiple plans for various situations. Boom! A muffled sound suddenly came from below, and every knight felt the ground shaking. The captain of group A was shocked and quickly asked, what's going on? A pigeon brought the sound of intense fighting, mixed with urgent shouts, group C has encountered the enemy in the research room. Repeat, Group C has encountered the enemy in the research room. Damn it, Zero has detonated a grenade, the research room is on fire. Where did he get the grenade? The captain of Group A was shocked and angry. He and his team were guarding the armory door, and no one had come. Reinforcements, immediate reinforcements. Which group is closest? We, Group B, are also on the third floor underground. The watchtower has been scrapped. We are rushing to the scene of the firefight. On the third floor underground, Henry hid around the corner of the corridor. The research room 10 meters away was billowing with black smoke, and the fire was fierce. He used three grenades tied together to bomb the room, burning all the research materials of Valkyrie. More than a dozen knights from Group C were shooting at the corner where he was hiding, after killing Baldo, Henry did not go directly to the main gate, but returned to the third floor underground in the opposite direction. He knew that the knights must have set up a dragnet, starting a systematic search from the upper floors. If he rushed up recklessly, he would definitely be ambushed since the plan to sneak away was not working, Henry had to change his plan. The research room was on the third floor underground, where all the research materials were stored. It could be said to be the core area of the entire castle. Blowing it up could disrupt the enemy's deployment to some extent, what, you want to ask where his grenades came from, he had basically studied and assembled all the equipment in the armory. In this process, it was not difficult to steal some gunpowder and iron balls from the grenades, quietly make new grenades and hide them, simple production, sole talent, you know. There are 77 longbow arrows left, and 5 homemade grenades. Henry checked his equipment. His firepower was limited. He quickly peeked around the corner and then immediately retracted. The arrows swept over immediately. If he was 0.5 seconds slower, he would have been hit by 2 or 3 arrows. 12 knights, 3 short swords, 9 longbows. Their firepower is stronger than mine. Henry's gaze shifted. It had been a minute since the attack on the research room. The Iron Eagle team would arrive in three minutes. He didn't have much time left. He shouldn't have known this news, but Henry picked up a pigeon from the body of a knight and thus learned about the enemy's deployment. The incident happened suddenly, and the knights didn't realize for a while that the pigeon had leaked their actions, Henry activated a grenade and threw it out. The knights of the Copper Wolf team hurriedly found cover to hide, and the sound of arrows stopped for a moment that was the opportunity he wanted. Henry's face was solemn, his iron-armored arm blocked in front of him, and he rushed out, quickly closing the distance between the two sides, before the smoke had cleared, Henry broke through the smoke and rushed to a knight. His iron-armored fist hit the knight's abdomen. The knight immediately vomited a mouthful of blood mixed with fragments of internal organs. This punch took away more than half of the target's life force, directly dissolving the enemy's combat power. Shoot the arrows! Quick, shoot the arrows! The sound of arrows was loud. 
Henry pushed the knight's body forward. The other enemies were ruthless and decisively shot arrows. The knight's back was sprayed with spots of blood, and he was shot into a pile of rotten meat, using the meat shield for cover, Henry successfully closed the distance. Like a tiger entering a flock of sheep, his iron-armored arm roared. A punch or a kick could break the knight's bones and tendons. He killed three people in a fierce fight the knights of the Copper Wolf team hurriedly scattered to increase the distance. Henry rolled and blocked with his iron-armored arm. The arrows were deflected by the iron armor, and his defense power dropped like a leak. He pulled out his longbow to counterattack, emptied an arrow bag, and shot three knights on the spot, just then, Henry suddenly felt a pain in his arm and thigh, you have been hit by a longbow in your right arm. You have taken 17 points of damage. You have been hit by a short sword in your left leg. You have taken 21 points of damage. You have been hit by an arrow. You are in a slight bleeding state, losing one point of life per second for 15 seconds. Please bandage as soon as possible, X2 arrow damage has a high chance of causing a bleeding effect, which is very troublesome in the early stages. Henry's eyes were slightly condensed. He was prepared for this. At this moment, he was a bit grateful for Belota's torture, which made him used to pain. Being injured did not affect his actions. Henry didn't have time to find cover and waste time shooting arrows with others. He gritted his teeth and directly pulled the grenade and threw it out. The spies hurriedly lay down, and the sound of arrows stopped again. Boom! The sound of the grenade explosion made Henry's eardrums hurt. He let out a low growl and rushed out again. A minute later, all the knights of the Copper Wolf team were killed under his iron armored arm. The price he paid was five arrows in his body. After the battle, he hurriedly bandaged his wounds, losing a total of 110 life points, more than a third. After leaving the combat state, life will recover at a very slow speed. It's too disadvantageous to fight hard. It would be nice to have active skills. Basic melee, basic archery, they only provide passive bonuses. Henry shook his head and took out the pigeon. Copper Wolf Team, Copper Wolf Team, please reply quickly, how is the situation? Henry pinched his throat and said, cough, the Copper Wolf Team has suffered heavy casualties and has blocked the target in the research room. We need reinforcements immediately. As he spoke, he picked up a short sword from the ground and waved it at random, creating the illusion of intense combat. Okay, hold on, the Iron Eagle Team is on the way. The other party was unsuspecting. Henry's disguise as a silent and taciturn figure was deeply ingrained in the minds of others, and they didn't expect Henry to use this strategy, Henry tied the remaining three grenades together, hung them on the door of the research room, and hung a thin line on the pole ring to make a simple trap. As soon as the door was opened, it would explode. Then he put a table horizontally as a cover, quickly searched for a large number of arrow bags from the bodies around him, replaced the arrows for the three short swords, placed them by his side, took the longbow and shot arrows at random to create the illusion of a firefight, and lay behind the cover waiting for the enemy to break in. The noisy footsteps were getting closer and closer, and with a bang, the door was broken open. Boom! The violent explosion came as expected. The firelight expanded, the shock wave swept up a ground full of broken glass, arrow shells, and stones, mixed with several screams. Without saying a word, Henry picked up a short sword in each hand, rushed to the door under the cover of dust, extended the sword tip out of the door. Team A returned the same way they came, arriving at the castle gate to meet up with Team D. Team C may have been wiped out, I'm going to call for reinforcements and hold the exit gate, said the captain of Team A, glancing at the personnel present. There were 31 castle guards in total, 31 swords pointed at the stone corridor, ready to tear any zero into pieces with an iron storm at a moment's notice. Suddenly, the captain of Team A felt something was wrong. Wait, weren't we supposed to be 30 people? Beep beep. The gatekeeper's light turned green, and the castle gate opened abruptly. Everyone turned around in confusion, only to see a black-clothed spy with a leather bag standing next to the castle gate, holding a silver key, tipping his hat brim with his finger, and whistling cheerfully at everyone. Bye-bye. He quickly pulled down the castle gate chain, rolled on the spot, and flipped out before the castle gate closed and locked. All the castle guards were petrified, standing dumbfounded in place. The captain of Team A's forehead was tense, and the locked castle gate seemed to be silently mocking him. When did Zero sneak in, the 80 centimeter thick iron castle gate closed with a bang. Finally escaped. The long-lost sunlight shone on him, warm and comfortable, the suffocation in his chest gradually dissipated, looking at the sky, it was about 4 or 5 in the afternoon, the radiant star hung high in the sky, in the scroll of white clouds and blue sky, the outlines of several planets could be faintly seen, some far and some near. The nearest one could even see the meteorite craters, these planets were the source of the moonlight of the sea blue star, refracting the starlight at night. Taking a deep breath, the fresh air cleansed his nostrils, and the breath of freedom made Henry feel refreshed. 
From beginning to end, Henry never intended to fight hard with all the castle guards, even if the castle was at its weakest defense at this time, whether he could fight or not was secondary, once the castle guards were reduced too much, making them see no hope, the gatekeepers would definitely not hesitate to activate the castle gate chain. Even if he turned into Rambo and staged first blood to kill all the castle guards, once the castle gate was locked, the escape plan would be declared GG, and then it would be Henry's turn to be dumbfounded. He disguised himself as a member of Team B to lure out Team A, then stripped a clean uniform from the bodies all over the ground, took off his iron arm guard and put it in his leather bag, and hid in the corner from the second to the third floor, which was a blind spot in the field of vision, and would be hard to find if not deliberately looked for. Having been in a safe environment for too long, these castle guards had low vigilance, and Henry knew this well. Team A's mind was all on the support, and hurried past the corner, Henry quietly followed at the end of Team A, very low-key, pressing his hat brim very low. These castle guards of Team A obviously didn't expect Henry to be so bold, who would count their teammates for no reason, for a while, no one noticed that there was an extra person at the end of the team. So Henry followed Team A safely to the front of the castle gate, and when the attention of these castle guards was distracted, he quietly approached the castle gate, staged a show of my home door often open, and locked all the castle guards in the castle. This was a risky move, once there was a mistake, he would be shot into a sieve by dozens of swords at close range. If he could choose, he wouldn't want to use risky moves, but unfortunately, the original plan was disrupted by Belota, so he had to take risks. If the success rate was around 50%, Henry was willing to try. The surrounding area was an abandoned wheat field, Henry found the traces of the iron horse carriage leaving, followed the horse carriage traces to find the stable, several black iron horse carriages were quietly lying in the stable, the keys were hanging next to the stable door, convenient for use at any time, now of course it was convenient for him. Reinforcements could arrive at any time, can't stay long. Escaping from the alchemy lab was just the first step, the imminent pursuit of the sprouts was bound to follow. Henry threw the backpack with the magic arm guard into the co-pilot seat of the carriage, picked up the magic wand of the carriage, put both hands on the driving rod, yo, it was real leather. He stepped on the magic driver of the carriage, the high-powered magic driver roared, and the iron horse carriage, like a runaway dog, broke through the farm fence and rushed into the dirt road of the black forest. Henry was completely unfamiliar with the surrounding terrain and could only identify one direction. The black kite magic airship, Bella's magic communicator rang, she frowned, answered the communicator, who is it? Captain of Team A, something happened at Dragonstone Castle, Zero is out of control, killed more than 30 guards, Deputy Lord Baldo and Dr. Linus, destroyed the alchemy data of the castle. The captain of Team A sounded dejected, a pot of failure was definitely on their backs, if they didn't notify the executioner, not only would their future be in trouble, but their lives would be in danger. Not to mention that a bunch of their brothers were still locked in the castle, if no one came to open the door, would they have to stare at each other until the end of time? Bella looked shocked, are you kidding me? She personally controlled Zero with magic, was Zero pretending at that time? The magic control effect of other test subjects had no problems at all. Was she deceived from beginning to end? Bella hurriedly contacted the leader, repeated the words of the captain of Team A, and the leader's breathing became heavy on the communicator, as if suppressing anger. You turn around immediately and chase him. Bella was reluctant, my sister. Shut up, you have no right to bargain with me. Bella bit her lip unwillingly and ordered the pilot reluctantly, turn around, back to Dragon Stone Castle. Executioner Bella, the airship needs to refuel first. Hurry up, the Night Raven squad received the leader's order halfway, several iron horse carriages returned the same way, opened the castle gate from the outside, and the special agents who were locked inside walked out with grey faces. Looking at the tragic state of the castle, Alfred was shocked and angry, his expression mixed with disbelief, pointing at the captain of Team A angrily, you dozens of people can't stop him alone, is there a traitor? He didn't think he could do it, and he didn't believe Henry could either. The guards' faces changed dramatically, no one could bear the charge of betraying the organization. All right, stop arguing, the leader ordered us to chase. Silver Sword interrupted the conversation, his face cold, leading the Night Raven squad members onto the car. Wait, we Alchemy Experiment Squad will go too. Alfred shouted, leading his team onto two other cars, he always considered himself a perfect test subject, and looked down on Henry, whose code was before him, but Henry's record inevitably made him fall into self-denial, so he felt very annoyed, Alfred felt that only by defeating Henry could he prove his value to the organization. The Night Raven squad ignored the surviving guards from beginning to end, their indifferent attitude clearly thought that they couldn't stop Henry even with dozens of people, they were simply a bunch of waste. The guards were indignant. Wait until they really encounter Zero, they will know what they are facing. These guards actually hoped that Zero would successfully escape, if even the Night Raven squad failed, wouldn't their mistake seem excusable? Night fell, through the gaps in the black forest, 
one could see several small planets in the sky emitting a faint blue glow, several moons, of different shapes were light and mysterious, the starry ocean was dazzling, and the view was breathtaking. Each large planet in the starry ocean had different environmental styles, and in the previous life, there were even leisure players who liked interstellar travel, taking pictures of the beautiful scenery of different planets, making star atlases, and even sold out on the official forum. At this time, the moonlight could hardly penetrate the black forest, and the visibility was very unclear. Henry drove carefully, fearing to hit a tree, the night was not good for him, the sound of the magic driver exposed his position, and the dark vision could not open too fast. Driving at night is too dangerous, better walk. Henry decided to abandon the horse, stopped the carriage, took out the carriage key and extinguished the carriage headlights. Without the sound of horseshoes, the silence of the black forest suddenly surrounded him, the tree shadows under the moonlight were like ghost hands that appeared and disappeared, the atmosphere was eerie. There were several leather water bags and military dry food in the storage box at the back of the carriage, Henry put them all in his bag, and walked alone into the forest. The carriage left tire tracks on the forest path, he couldn't erase the traces, he could only change direction and run after.